Okay, so hello and welcome back to another Python tutorial. In this one, we're going to be covering the other search algorithm. Now, there's more than two, but for this, I'm going to be just covering the linear search and now the binary search algorithm. Uh, here's a good diagram on how it works. Let me just zoom into this. So here we have a list of numbers in order. And in Python, when we make it, we don't have to input an ordered list because there is a command to sort it in order, into order. But when it actually runs the algorithm, it needs, it needs to be on a list that's sorted, otherwise it won't work. Uh, and the reason is because it does greater than and less than checks. So what it'll do is you'll have an inputted number. So in this case, seven, this is what you're trying to find. It goes through the list and it goes to the halfway point, which is 14. It says, well, 14 is bigger than seven. So your number is not here because this is all bigger. So then it takes the rest of them and it says, We'll go to the halfway point, which here is six. It's less than halfway uh, because there's three on this side and four on that side, but you can't obviously get halfway between an even number. Um, and then it says, well, six is less than seven, so it's not down here. And it's also from earlier, not up here. So now it's here. And it'll say, well, halfway is eight. And it says, well, eight is bigger than seven, so it's not here. So the only one that's left is here. Here's seven. Obviously, if this wasn't seven, if this was a different number, then it would be like, well, your number's not in the list. And if we did this in linear search, it would take one, two, three, four, five checks to find it. Whereas in this, it'll take one, two, three, four. So we, in this example, the binary search is faster than the linear search to find the number. Though this isn't true in all cases, because if our number was right at the start of the list, we'd find it instantly. And in bi uh, the binary search would say, well, it's down here somewhere. And then halfway, well, it's down here somewhere, halfway. Well, it's down here somewhere and down here. It would take longer. Um, this is really good in big data sets because let's say you had 100 values and you do your first check, it would already eliminate 50 of the options. So you half every time it checks, you get rid of half of the remaining things, which uh, is faster in big data sets, or it can be. It's not always faster because obviously the linear search will always win if it's in the first slot, but it's not always going to be in the first slot. Obviously, different algorithms are good better in different places, and you gotta you gotta work with what you got. So. Let's close this and make it in Python. So let's first of all make a list. So we're going to be going to stick to the naming of numbers. We're going to put in a six, two, seventy-six, fifty-three, twenty-four, eighty-four. These are off the top of my head. Ninety-one, twenty-four. Yeah, whatever. Just pressing random things, and then we can do numbers. Dot sort. Parentheses. And what this does is, if we now print the list of numbers. Now, if we didn't have this line, it would just print 6, 2, 76, whatever. If we print it now, it gives us it ordered. The list is in order. Now, this is kind of cheating because when we go on to make sorting algorithms, all we're doing is this line, but we're doing what's behind the scenes because dot sort is just, well, sort is a um, pre-made function that the co you could look up the code for this. I don't know if you can just do it on here. Probably somehow, but um, this is a pre-made function for Python that has a sorting algorithm behind the scenes and it just is here simply for us to use. But for the sake of learning, we won't use that when we actually make sorting algorithms. We want to sort it ourselves. But anyway, now that we've got the list sorted, we can take in an input. So we'll say uh, like, whoops, we'll say the wanted number is uh, int input and then we'll, we'll take um, enter a number. So this is the number that they want to find. Uh, in the list and then what we can do is we can make the function binary search now this is a little bit more complicated than usual uh, we're going to take in parameters the, I'll put in the parameters we want to take in uh, numbers and uh, wanted all right so I'm gonna do the normal uh, let you have a go at making the function and then I'll come back and do it um, so what we need here is we need to know when it's found a number, or if it doesn't, to output false, for example. Um, we need to check the middle point of this list, and then if it's greater than the number we want, um, we'll check the bottom half, and if it's less, we'll, if the middle number's less, then we'll check the uh, top half. And then you want to keep halving and halving until you find the number. So if you think you can do this, then have a go. You should have a go anyway, but just wait a second. You've probably paused the video now if you want to actually do it you're probably back now anyway so I'll get on to making it so what we need to do is we need to have a boolean so we'll stick to naming it found obviously at the moment we haven't found it so it's false 
we then need two variables to know where to check between. So uh, the first will be checking halfway between the first value in the list and the end. So first can be index zero, and last will be uh, the length of the list minus one, because in this list, the length is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. But position eight would be here off the end of the list, because remember we count from zero, so it'd be zero to seven. So we'd have to type uh, numbers minus one, so we get seven here, which is the end. So between zero and seven is where we're checking. And then we can do a while loop, so we can go uh, while uh, first is less than or equal to last. Uh, and that's basically so that if we once we're finished it'll stop if we haven't found the number because um, if uh, this first value well it basically can't get greater than the number anyway so this is kind of like a safety check uh, and let me just uh, put these in brackets so while while this and uh, not found because if found is true we could put um, and found is equal to false because if found is equal to true with we don't want to do it anymore anyway so this part here stops it if we've exhausted every possible option and then this bit stops it if we found the number okay because keep in mind we might get through the whole thing and not find the number um, okay so what do we want to do here we want to get the midpoint to check we need a variable that will keep changing, so we'll call it midpoint. And because it's in a while loop, it will keep changing uh, throughout the loop. So midpoint is going to be uh, oops, equal to, we're going to take uh, first plus last. So first, yeah, first plus last. And then we want to divide it by two to get the midpoint, because obviously if it's seven long. But the problem is, we can't really divide a list that's an odd amount, uh, sorry, that's an even amount long because there's no middle point. So in Python, there's three different ways to divide numbers. You can either do slash two to divide by two, and in this case, we'll get pack, we'll get back the halfway number. Now, if we're dividing uh, an even number, we'll get uh, well. If we divide eight, we'll get four. Four, we'll get two, so on. But because this is between zero and seven, if we divide seven, we'll get three point five. And there is no index 3.5. You can't have decimals in indexes. So what we're going to do is we're going to use slash slash, which is div. And that basically is integer division. So it means it'll divide it as many times as it can whole. So let's say we're dividing 17 by 2 with this. Uh, sorry, well, we'll, yeah. No, we'll do 15 divided by 2. So normally it's 7.5. But because we haven't quite got 8, it just stays a 7. So in this case, if we had uh, 15 div 2, we would get 7. And the reason we do this is because we need to get whole numbers every time, otherwise it just won't work because you can't search for decimals. Um, and the other kind of division is modulus, which is with a percent sign, and that gives back the remainder. So if we did like 3 modulus 2, it would give us back 1 because we put one in, uh, 2 into 3 and we've still got 1 left. Anyway, so div 2. I hope this makes sense. It, yeah, literally just divide the number, and if it's a decimal, you round down because you can't round up because you haven't actually got to the number yet. Like, you can't just cheat your way up because you, it doesn't go in. Okay, and then after we've got the midpoint, we then check if uh, numbers midpoint, so this list and then the midpoint we're checking, if that value is our wanted number, did I just call it wanted? Yeah. If, uh, that midpoint value is our wanted number, then uh, found is true because, uh, you know, we found it. Um, else, so obviously if it isn't what we wanted, we then have to do two different checks. We want to say, well, uh, well not two different checks, but we get an if, uh, if we get true or false. So we say like, if our wanted number, uh, we can check if it's less than the number at the midpoint. So if we want a number that is less than the midpoint, um, we want to let me put my colon. We want to set the last num the last variable, which is normally the end of the list. We want to set it to the midpoint minus one. Now you might think originally that we just set it to, oops, we'll just set it to the midpoint. The problem is if we set it to the midpoint, it'll then check between the midpoint and the start. But we've already ruled out the midpoint 
because if it was the midpoint, then we would have found it. So midpoint minus one. And then if you haven't guessed this already, if it isn't less than, it has to be greater than because we've already checked if it's equal to. So now that we know that it's either less than else greater than, we just want to set the first equal to the midpoint plus one. So then, so let, let's see here. So this is basically saying if a wanted number is greater than, if we want a number that's greater than halfway, we want to set the first value, so the lowest to check from in the list, up to the midpoint added to one. Because obviously, again, if we check the midpoint, we, we've already checked it, so it's not necessary. Um, now, I just like doing uh, spaces here. Okay. And then right at the end of this, we can we can return true or false, which is found. So we can return found. This will basically return true if we found the number, false if we haven't. And then right at the end, we can do an if, so we can say like if, and then we can run the function, so if. Now one thing I haven't covered yet is, if you run a function that returns a boolean, you can use the function as an argument in the list, if that makes sense to you. So let me just input the, the list numbers and the wanted number. So what we're saying here is, if this function, so basically the output of the function, that's all it's going to do, when we do the if here, this is this is when the function is getting ran. Normally, I'll just leave the function out down here, but we're putting it inside an if loop. So if, and then it's going to give us like true or false. We can check if it's uh, true, then we can print um, like I found your number, uh, and then we can put else print. Uh, your number is not here. Now this, in theory, should work. So enter a number. We want to find. Let's let's pick a number that's not in the list. So we'll just go for one hundred, one thousand. Ooh, found is not. It's because I put it with a capital here. Sorry. Start again. Come on, Python. So let's go back for a thousand again. Uh, why do I keep doing this? <laughs> you probably picked up on these stupid mistakes. I keep naming things wrong. If wanted equals numbers. Okay, go again. Please hope there's no more problems. One thousand. Your number is not here. Okay. We'll go again. We want to try and find uh, blah, 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 that number. It's not here. How about if we want to find a number that's in the list? We want to find seventy-six. I found your number. So what it's doing is when I put in 76, well, actually what I'll also do is I'll print numbers after I've sorted it because it makes it a lot easier to see. So enter a number, well, I want to find uh, 24. Obviously it found it. So what it's going to do is it's going to say, well, here's our here's, uh, first, because first is zero. Here's last, it's this one. And it says the midpoint, which will be here, Actually, the midpoint might... Okay, so what we're doing is we're taking the first plus last. So, wait, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. We're doing the modulus division, which won't give us 3.5. It'll give us 3. So, 0, 1, 2, 3. We're going to check this value. Is this 24? No, it's less. So, then we set um, midpoint... Well, we set last, which is going to be the end value. We're going to set it down to the midpoint, which is this, minus 1. So, now we check these three. But we actually check the midpoint of this, which is 6. Is 6 less than or greater than 24? It's less than. So we go up 1. And the only one that's left is 24, found your number. That's how it works. Anyway, so yeah, I'll link to the uh, binary search thing. I'll, here's the code on screen. I'll zoom in. There you go. I hope this uh, tutorial was good enough for teaching this algorithm. Uh, obviously, there are different ways to write it. This might not be the most efficient way of writing it. This is how I would do it if I got given the task. It's a way that makes sense to me. Uh, it works perfectly fine. Um, just the things to keep in mind with this is you need to have a sorted list. So either enter it sorted or just do dot sort. Um, and that's basically it. You can't really do binary search with uh, strings. You might, well, if you did it with strings, you would have to have a way of checking, like, you could order them in less like alphabetical order um, by checking the first character but obviously I'm not going to do that now we've already been recording for 15 minutes um, 
but yeah, so uh, the usual outro, if you want to join the Discord to have discussions about Unity, Python, anything, um, that's in the, in the description as well. If you want to support me, uh, subscribing would be lovely. Uh, like the videos that you want to see more of and comment what you want tutorials on so that I know what to make videos on. But apart from that, uh, if you enjoyed the video, good, good, good. Thanks for watching and goodbye.